Okay. When I first did any some sort of public speaking or comedy, I was so nervous that my hands would creep up to my face and I ended up talking like a dinosaur the whole time. So if you can all help me, if my hands come up to my face at any time, I would just want you to clap and cheer, okay? <laughs> at some point in our lives, we've all said, everything happens for a reason. Like, I didn't get the job I really wanted. Guess everything happens for a reason. Or, I met this guy, he was so beautiful, he was tall, dark, and handsome, but it didn't work out. I guess everything happens for a reason. Uh, what if we could look at our past experiences and find the reasons why? Hi, I'm Paris Elinas. I'm a 25-year-old Englishman from Grantham, England. I currently live in Brno, Czech Republic, where I'm the uh, chief development officer of a children's language camp based in Eastern Europe. And over the years, I've realized that everything that happens in our life Good and bad happens for a reason. We may not know it at the time, but there is a reason why. We all have our unique journeys, and if we lay it out in front of us and see it through clear eyes, we can begin to forgive and make positive changes, not only in our lives, but others too. Now I'm going to share with you my journey about something that devastated my world. And at the time, I wasn't able to say, everything happens for a reason. But it sent me in a direction that once I was able to see clearly, taught me to forgive others, and most importantly, myself. About four years ago, I was a typical arrogant young man who didn't care for much other than himself. I was going to be a break dancer, a stuntman, an athlete. I was going to be king of the world. I also worked in McDonald's. <laughs> but I was the best McDonald's worker. During a break dancing competition, I slipped on a wet floor and completely destroyed my knee and I couldn't walk for months. Literally, my whole world ended. Uh, everything that I'd worked hard for over the years, wasted. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, right? But it's like investing years of your life into something like learning a language or an instrument or studying to be a doctor and you forget it all. It steals your morale and your motivation. Uh, I lost my friends because I couldn't keep up with them. I was working in McDonald's with my leg up on a chair with an ice pack saying, would you like that large? <laughs> uh, I couldn't sleep at night. Gymnastics night became drinking night. I was embarrassed, ashamed, and I hated myself. But this happened for a reason. I just didn't know it at the time. I was forced to make a change in my life. So I contacted my old summer job saying, can I have my uh, job back? And they emailed me saying, unfortunately, we're unable to offer you a position this summer because of inappropriate pictures on social media. Regards. <laughs> what could they have seen on my social media that they wouldn't give me my job back? Now, during my TEDx audition, I showed the original picture Everyone laughed, and they suggested that I chose something different. So here's a picture of a sloth. You can use your imagination. Uh, you can come up to me at the end, and if you want to see it. So I looked online, and I found these two jobs. I applied for them. I got them both. I packed my life into my car and drove down to the south of England. It was there that I worked with amazing people, uh, I had a great job, and I fell in love with a beautiful Australian girl. <laughs> but it didn't pay enough, so I went to the second job, where I met two Ukrainians who offered me a job in Slovakia. They then offered me a job in Ukraine. In four months, and I went from a depressed boy who struggled to find motivation in his life to a man who had great friends, amazing job, and... Happy. But then the war happened. This is a disaster for the country I love. I had to leave my job, leave my flat, and my friends behind, and go back to my old life. This happened for a reason. But I came home motivated and inspired. I started my own project, 
where I raised money and I went around Europe in a camper van where I volunteered with families and just helped them with anything they wanted. Amazing, right? I had a great time. But I came back absolutely broke. Nothing. Zero. And my father said to me, it was time to make, take life more seriously. So I took anything I could and I got a job at a call center, cold calling people, uh, offering them vacuum cleaner repairs. I got promoted to oven cleaner. Before my very first shift cleaning ovens, I got fired. Uh, during the small interview with him, for some reason, I missed a number uh, out of my phone number. Now, I never got my, rumba, uh, my number wrong in my life, so yeah. The next job I got uh, was delivering kebabs and pizzas in my five and a half meter camper van. Can you imagine opening your door to a man with a kebab with a minibus in the background? Her name was Babushka, by the way. She was beautiful. Uh, oh, I accidentally jumped then. Uh, after that, uh, I had two cho choices. It was go to Canada, plant some trees, or follow my father's advice and take life more seriously and get a job as an engineer. I took my father's advice and became an engineer. Now, I was there that I worked with racist, ignorant people. And after all my experiences around the world, it hurt, you know. Every day I was angry. Every day I was frustrated. I started to resent my life. I started to resent my job. So you know what I did? I got fired. <laughs> After that, I fell out of my father. We argued about, well, I can't remember now. But it ended off with me storming off, hating my father, resenting England, and sad. I was depressed. I lost my father. Now, Dad, if you're watching today, I didn't get it. Uh, I know you meant well. I just didn't get it. And now I do, and I love you very much. My, my current business partner offered me an opportunity to go to Ukraine and develop the business. It was there that I began to uh, grow and become more confident. I did my first stand-up comedy competition, completely in Russian. I traveled the world, and the business was doing great. I then traveled to South America, where I got really ill with altitude sickness. I flew home. I lost a lot of weight. I was tired. I missed my father. I was exhausted. I was about to fly to Australia, and I sat in the airport, and I was just shaking. It was time to give traveling a rest. You'd had enough. Now, uh, after that, I came back. I took a group of Ukrainians to London. They was in the museum, and I was walking down the street trying to find a cafe, and I'm walking, and my father walks around the corner. Now, my father is a stay-at-home type of guy, uh, he's retired and doesn't venture far from the sofa. He lives three hours away north of England, and we both had no idea we were in London. I cried, he cried, we hugged, and we cried together. <laughs> so manly. <laughs> uh, I had a moment at my sister's wedding this summer in Budapest. I was surrounded by my friends and my family. I was no longer angry at myself or the world. If it wasn't for injuring my knee, the unfortunate photos on social media, uh, going to Ukraine, the war, arguing with my father, going to Ukraine, getting ill and tired of traveling, and although all these hurt so much at the time, I wouldn't be living in Czech Republic with that beautiful girl I'd met four years ago, standing on a TEDx stage, happy. Thanks. Oh, thank you. There's my old pappy, my dad. There's, there's, there she is. <laughs> and there she is. <laughs> um, now, that's my story. 
I want to share with you some stories about people that I've met along the way, real people. I met this amazing woman who had a very hard time during the war. She was then diagnosed with cancer. So her husband bought her a plot of land. He built her a house in two months. Every day she walked into the woods. She rubbed her fingers in the dirt. She hugged trees. She surrounded herself with animals in and out of the house, really. She had volunteers from all around the world. And every day, she's happy now. A friend of mine had a high-paid, high-stress job in London. It was so stressful, she had a stroke at a very young age. And after a very difficult road of recovery, she's now started her own fashion line, something she's always wanted to do and living her dream. A friend of mine had a very difficult childhood. Everything happened that you do not want to imagine. But now, because of this, she's dedicated her life helping, to helping others. And I've never met anyone so passionate in my life. Now, never at any time do you, these people, or me, deserve these things that have happened to us. This is not to justify your past, but a tool to help you with your future. When you go home today, I want you to lay out your life in front of you, see what, uh, draw it, write it, speak about it, sing it, dance it, and see what journey you've go gone on and see how it's benefited your life. If you can't forgive yourself or others, start helping other people who share the same pain as you. And by helping other people, you can help yourself. Now, I want to do something with you called the sounds of life. When I raise my hand up, I want you to go, ah, oh. no, wait. I want you to go, yay, sorry. And when I go down, I want you to go, ah. Oh. Okay. Ready? I was going to be king of the world. But I injured my knee. So I moved to the beach and fell in love. But it didn't pay well enough. So I moved to Ukraine. And then there was the war. Oh. <laughs> so I went around Europe in a camper van and helped people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> then I was broke. Oh. So I got a job. Yeah. I got fired. Oh. <laughs> so I moved to Ukraine. Yeah. But I'd argued with my father. Oh. I traveled the world. Yeah. But I got really ill. But I made it with my father. Yeah. I nearly missed my TEDx audition. Oh. Now there's a reason why you're all here today. And hopefully I've inspired you to find it. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much.